The novel Vanity Fair by William Thackeray was published in the year 1848. As Vanity Fair opens, Amelia Sedley, a conventional girl from a well-to-do family, and Becky Sharp, Sedley's orphaned, penniless, and already corrupt friend, are leaving Miss Pinkerton's school, where they have met and become friends. They go to the Sedley home, where Becky will be a guest until she goes on to the governor's position that Miss Pinkerton has arranged for her. Becky meets Amelia's older brother Joseph, called Joss, who is on leave from his government post in India. Although Joss is fat, lazy, conceited and shy with women, he is also financially well off and Becky schemes to marry him. Through flattery and false modesty, Becky succeeds in making all the Sedleys believe that she truly is enamored of Joss and Joss is inclined to propose to her. George Osborne, Amelia's fiancé, intervenes persuading Joss that he has embarrassed himself in Becky's presence. George does not want a governess for a sister-in-law. Defeated, Becky leaves for the Crawley estate where she is to be governess. The mean-spirited and stingy Sir Pitt Crawley is the patriarch of Queen's Crawley where Becky takes up her post as governess to his two young daughters, Rosalind and Violet. Sir Pitt also has two much older sons by his first wife. The elder also named Pitt is pious and proper to an extreme. The younger Rawdon is a dandy and a gambler. The two despise each other. The irreverent and debt-ridden Reverend Bute Crawley, Sir Pitt's brother and his nosy, overbearing wife come to the scene. Sir Pitt and Bute also hate each other. The family members are united only in their desire to see their wealthy old aunt Matilda dead. They all connive to inherit her fortune. George is disrespectful of Amelia in the presence of his army comrades, for which his long-time friend William Dobbin berates him. Physically awkward but highly virtuous, Dobbin has loved Amelia since youth, but considers himself unworthy of her. George's father, who has long encouraged George to marry Amelia, now suspects that her family has lost its money and wants George to break the engagement. The self-serving George is willing to do so. Becky has charmed Aunt Matilda and at the old lady's request has moved to her home to nurse her. Rawdon is smitten with Becky and spends as much time with her as he can. Sir Pitt's wife Lady Crawley dies and immediately Sir Pitt asks Becky to marry him. Here Becky cries the only genuine tears of her life because she must reject the wealthy Sir Pitt, having secretly married Rawdon. Sir Pitt and old aunt Betilda are both enraged at this news. Becky and Rawdon go on a honeymoon and Mrs. Bute Crawley descends on Aunt Matilda, hoping to turn her against Rawdon and secure her fortune for herself and her husband. Then the Sedley's possessions are sold at an estate sale. The family's financial ruin, due to Mr. Sedley's unwise business speculation, is complete and public. In the meantime, against the wishes of both their fathers, George and Amelia marry. Next, everyone meets in Brighton, where Dobbin announces that the men have been ordered to go to Belgium, where the first Duke of Wellington, the British general, who is commanding a multinational army, plans to launch an attack on Napoleon's army. The peace-loving, selfless Dobbin tries to get George's father to accept George's marriage to Amelia, but Mr. Osborne instead disinherits George. George blames Dobbin because it was Dobbin who encouraged him to marry Amelia. Mrs. Bute Crawley is forced to leave on Matilda when the Reverend is injured and needs her at home. 
Becky and Rodden then try to move in on the old woman, ostensibly to take over her care, but she is wise to their designs on her money. Everyone goes to Belgium. The men except Jaws are in military service. Jaws and the women accompany them. George and Becky flirt shamelessly and Amelia is too blind to understand why she is heartsick. George finally passes Becky a mysterious note and then remorseful tries to make up with Amelia. General and Mrs. O'Dowd, the regiment commander and his wife, prepare for the battle. Mrs. O'Dowd, accustomed to sending her husband into battle, mothers the younger women and pursues her goal of finding a husband for the general's sister. Rawdon is distressed at leaving Becky. George is relieved at leaving Amelia. The battle begins. The women can hear the cannons booming in the distance. Amelia is worried sick for George, while Becky fantasizes about her prospects to better herself if Rawdon is killed. In fact, it is George who dies in the Battle of Waterloo. Back in England, Sir Pitt has taken up with Miss Horrocks, his butler's daughter, scandalizing the family. Young Pitt courts Lady Jane Sheepshanks and the sweet, kind Lady Jane in turn wins the affection of Aunt Matilda. Both Becky and Amelia give birth to sons. Dobbin tries to comfort Amelia as she grieves for George. Becky and Rawdon manage to live well on very little money. Becky is an expert at avoiding paying her bills. Rawdon makes little money gambling. They lease a house from Mr. Raggles, a former servant of the Crawleys, but cannot pay the rent. In turn, Raggles is unable to pay his bills and is sent to debtor's prison. On Matilda dies, young Sir Pitt inherits her wealth and Becky and Rawdon try to ingratiate themselves with the heir. Becky ignores her son little Rawdon, but his father loves him. Dobbin gives Amelia much-needed money, saying it was left to her by George. Jaws returns to India. Sir Pitt becomes ill, lingers for a time and then dies. Young Sir Pitt takes over Queen's Crawley and sends for Becky and Rawdon in a gesture of family unity. Dobbin is in India with his regiment when he hears a false rumor that Amelia is going to get married. He requests leave to go to England. Becky and Rawdon go to Queen's Crawley for Christmas where Becky fawns over everyone who has status or money, especially the young Sir Pitt. The Sedley family is sinking further into poverty. The Osborns, George's father and sisters, want George's son Gregory to come live with them and offer Amelia money if she will give him up. But after some delay, Amelia agrees to this so that Gregory is not reared in poverty. Lord Stain, with whom Becky has a vaguely explained and profitable relationship, arranges for Becky to be presented at court, the successful culmination of all her social climbing. She appears draped in expensive jewels, unbeknownst to Rawdon. These are gifts from Lord Stain. This begins a period of social triumph for Becky. Lord Stain sends little Rawdon away to school, which pleases Becky who cannot be bothered with him. Rawdon, long ignored by his wife, is jailed for failing to pay a debt. Becky is slow to answer his message, asking her to have him released, so he contacts Sir Pitt and Lady Jane. Lady Jane arrives without delay to free him. At home, Rawdon finds Becky entertaining Lord Stain. He attacks Lord Stain. He hurls a diamond pin at his forehead leaving Lord Stain scared and goes through Becky's belongings and finds her stash of money and jewellery. Both Rawdon and Lord Stain abandon Becky and they plan to duel. Becky pleads with Sir Pitt to help her reconcile with Rawdon and he agrees to try. Lord Stain's man, Wenham, uses diplomacy to prevent the duel. Rawdon takes a post on Coventry Island, a remote place from which he sends money for Becky and his son. Sir Pitt and Lady Jane look after little Rawdon. 
Dobbin and Jaws return to England from India. Dobbin's return has been delayed by a serious illness. Dobbin goes to see Amelia and is relieved to find that she has not married. Finally, he divulges that he has long loved her, but she continues to think only of George. Dobbin spends time with little Georgie and improves the boy's character while Jaws belatedly helps his family financially. Old Mr. Osborne dies, leaving half his money to Georgie and also leaving some money for Amelia. Jaws, Amelia, Georgie and Dobbin go to Europe. Becky, who has been wandering around Europe since losing Rawdon and Lord Stain, meets up with them and renews her pursuit of Jaws. After warning Jaws that Becky is dangerous, Dobbin leaves to rejoin his regiment. Becky reveals to Amelia the contents of the mysterious note that George gave her on the eve of his death at Waterloo. George urged Becky to run away with him. Amelia finally has some understanding of George's true character. She sends for Dobbin. He returns and they marry immediately. Becky continues to ensnare Jaws and talks him into taking out a life insurance policy with her as beneficiary. Within months, he dies of poisoning. Becky's role in his death is left unclear. Rawdon then dies on Coventry Island of yellow fever. Sir Pitt dies and little Rawdon inherits Queen Scrawley. Amelia and Dobbin are happy together and have a daughter. Becky lives comfortably in Europe on the money from Jaws' insurance policy and on an allowance sent to her by her son. She becomes a churchgoer and gives generously to charity.